Hi, uh, Tanner has brought us a toy. It's a 996. Uh, what year is this Porsche? Uh, it's an 01. So this, I mean, this is like the 996 is the car that yeah. the purest Porsche guys really dislike because it's the first water cooled. They made a bunch right. of them. This is the turbo. They're really kind of inexpensive yeah. to buy. You know, uh, I, I don't all, know about the non-turbo, the turbo ones, but the non-turbo ones, the engines weren't great. So the cars lost their value because the cost to replace the engine was, was so much money. Yeah. So it wasn't until the second gen. Are the turbos kind of the same way or is it a completely now different Now the turbo, engine? it's a GT2 racing motor. It's yeah. the same as the 997. Um, there's some things, like there are some hoses that are known to come loose if you do a lot of track days on them that pops out of second gear if you do mm -hmm. a lot of track days. So there are some certain things, but I, I have to be honest, like the, the value of the 996 is like half the 997 one year later, yeah. mm -hmm. just because of the right. name on it and because people don't necessarily like the headlights. And um, the guy who owned this car had put $200,000 into the car. Oh, wow. And That's I bought it with 40,000 miles. With three kilos of coke. With three it kilos wasn't, of coke. It wasn't yeah. actually into the car. <laughs> There's it was no extra the parts at all. Yeah, no, it's, it's just a bone stock, but had the coke, <laughs> which he was able to sell. I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad. That was, that was easy. 200 grand into this car. Right, and I paid 45 for it. Wow. Oh, really? I, I've yeah. told well, that's people a great, this that's a, a great deal. Million, and it's very normal, yeah. yeah. A million times, let somebody dump. I tell this with like race cars. Yeah. Because it's like, here's a guy and you're, you got a torch and you're cutting out everything and you're putting a cage in and you're doing all the suspension geometry and you're doing right. The, like if somebody said to me, I want you to put four camber, adjustable camber plates in on this car, I'd be like, 10 grand. Yeah. I don't got that kind of time. And you can get these cars that you guys have 2,000 hours into and you buy them for 11 grand. Yeah. yeah. Buy it and then you can muss with the motor if you want or you can muss around with the paint scheme or whatever. But let somebody do all the yeah. heavy lifting and then you buy but it. But these are still Porsches. So when you say a guy put 200 grand into it, it's like, ah, oh, you put an right. exhaust and a cold air intake. I think the brakes were 26,000. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, but, there is a, but that's the thing is it's almost more valuable if you take all that stuff off. Yeah, part it Be out. Because, you know, these things, it really matters how they were driven. But I, so I drove, I bought it as a GT car because I do a lot of work in the desert. The, you know, Top sure. Gear stuff we did was deep in the desert. You drive out there to shoot all the time. And it's a, it's kind of a GT car. It's not like a GT3 RS that's mm -hmm. super lightweight and, right. uh, you know, go-kartish. It's a little heavier. It's a, it cruises a little nicer, but I've been really impressed with it. It's a, it's a pretty, I think it's a good car. It's all wheel drive, correct? It's all wheel drive. It's uh, when I bought it, it was 750 horsepower. Now it's about 670 maybe. You can't handle 750? Couldn't handle it. <laughs> it scared me just a little bit. It made me cry. I peed a little yeah. bit. I was pretty impressed when I talked to racers who raced Porsches. And I said, why the Porsche? It sounds like an expensive car to race. And they said, no, they don't break. It's the so cheapest. It's yeah. cheap because they don't break. Yeah. You can race well, really a, makes sense. You can race a Mustang and break a lot of shit, yeah. or you can race a Porsche. So does and Ferrari not break. break all the time? Because it's expensive to buy, expensive I, to race. I, yeah. When I see those guys, like every once in a while, I see like a 308 race car. <laughs> and, oh, well, uh, that's not going to work. Wow. Who, how much? Who's got that kind of? So, uh, what have you done to this Beautiful thing? Beautiful gray. That's got yes, two hundred thousand um, dollars. Also, Evo MS had the car, which is a company in um, Phoenix. Yes. And so they did their seven hundred fifty uh, horsepower kit, which is basically just piping headers. Yeah. Um, they replaced the internals of the turbo. They put on different intercoolers and all that kind of stuff. I'm familiar um, with that group out there. Yep. Yeah. And then when I got over here, now it goes to BBI. They they detuned it a little bit because it was boosting like a 1.6 bar, which I don't know what that is, but it's Nobody probably knows. 25 pounds. Yeah, one bar pounds. is atmospheric pressure, so it'd be 14.7 pounds. Right? Wow. Roughly, push. you what gotta push the you? glasses up when you say that. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, yeah, no. Wow. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> but that, so it's, um, you know, it, it's safe. It runs safe now, which is a driver for me. Like I'm going to the racetrack tomorrow, and this goes to the racetrack, but I, I probably won't take it on the track because that's it's a street car. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Wow, what a life you're living, because uh, it seemed like just yesterday he was um, sliding school buses in frozen parking lots. <laughs> it was yesterday, yes. <laughs> Somewhere in Colorado, right? Yeah, no, it's been cool. But. And uh, now just making a living and living the dream because 
you know, the whole Hot Wheels thing is amazing, but uh, Top Gear is amazing. It's doing the stunt driving is amazing. And the rally cross. The rally cross. You're kicking amazing, ass out there. The X game stuff. I mean, it's just. I've been really lucky. Getting involved with Rockstar was good because they're sort of this company that, if you say it's cool, then okay, we'll go do it. Right. Oh, they've never heard of rally cross, and I was like, look, I want to go to Europe. It's going to cost all this crazy money to go do this sport. By the way, it's in a Fiesta. Right. Let me go do it, and they're like. Okay, and and so sure, why not? sometimes you get lucky and get involved with companies that are willing to sort of take a risk like that. Yeah, and they said uh, the caveat is is you have to jump a fia jump a Fiesta 319 feet just yeah, to, PS, or a truck yeah, or that's right. You yeah. see this jump of this Lincoln right here? You need to double that. <laughs> you need to double that. <laughs> so <laughs> show us a little bit right. more about this car since yeah. we've got it. This is um, what Tanner Faust drives every day, by the way. If people yes. ask, this uh, is what Tanner drives. I want to look at the front. Yeah, so like it's uh, it's got a KW suspension that that I've. To not, you know, for the rate. The thing about cars is when you lower them, you can soften them. And what a lot of people think is that low has to be stiff, mm -hmm. which it doesn't. Once you lower the center of gravity, the car doesn't lean as much. Right. So you can have softer springs. Interesting. And in, so unless every Honda Civic that I've seen lowered is doing it wrong. Doesn't need to be like that, right? And so you <laughs> don't have. Like it's got Parkinson's. It, it, unless it's going, <laughs> unless it's going to bottom out on stuff. Right. And so this I've lowered. I've been working with KW on coming up with a unique setting that's not like a track weekend warrior type right. setup. That's a street low setting. Right. Right. And it so it rides really good actually. And and then the carbon brakes and the you know HRE wheels and. And um, what do you do for, what's your favorite radar detector? <laughs> I got I a Valentine. Valentine, because <laughs> I know two of you, them, actually. Need, you need one when you're shooting in the desert. Yeah. You're a guy who 106 miles an hour in the air feels slow to you. So imagine <laughs> what's 65 on the ground in this car. Yeah. And you know you got nothing but highway ahead of you. And you know this thing is, you'd be perfectly comfortable at 140 in this car and you're stuck at 65 you gotta kick something it's on. a problem but you know we have it pretty good in this country if you go to mexico you start thinking oh man they're so strict in the states but if you go over in europe where they just take your picture every time you're speeding yes and there's no defense against no. it unless you have a tom tom that might tell you where the i wear an adam Krola mask that's yeah. a good one actually that's yeah. pretty good and his license plate but it's like uh you know we have it there's a lot of open all right. Open road here, you know. Uh, shoot. Can you fire the yeah, up yeah. so we can uh, give it a listen? And uh, yeah, no Tiptronic here, just actual it, six speed. It may sound a lot less like that 935 that was passing you. <laughs> yeah. well, it's got, it's like good. that same, uh, same Porsche sound, you know, which is. Yes. But it's a hungry hungry car but it has sort of like the racer type stuff where you can hear like the clutch uh, I forgot the key was on the left on these uh, things. you know it's got like a lot of clutch rattle and stuff because it's yeah, you know right. got the multi -play but clutch again that's it's funny luck. I noticed that in the GTR as well that weird yeah. that transaxle is just it makes a lot of noise in that car it's the, good noise it's the, good. <laughs> the the moral of the story is find somebody who dumped a bunch of money into a really cool piece and, or even a stock one that's, you know, what's the big difference between an 07 turbo and a two, I know the 2012. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say anything. And a little that, but you don't think an all wheel drive and 505 horsepower is enough car for you right. from 08, you know what I mean? You just get one and save yourself 75 grand, 100 grand even, right? I mean, it's pretty, and when it comes time to sell it, yeah. You'll take a little step, but you won't have a free fall. Yeah. You'll it's, buy it, drive around for a few years, sell it, and lose five it's grand. It's hard for me to justify spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on a car. I love them. And if I didn't have a job where I got to drive them and experience them anyway, maybe that'd be different. Right. But, I mean, it's, I mean, ultimately the desire sometimes is 10 times greater than the having. Yeah. And if you can find a couple cars that when you own them, you just, you can't wait to drive them every day then I mean I can drive those for a hundred thousand miles I still have my same m3 that you know I've had since it was new and it has a hundred thousand miles on it and it's just a good car I'm going to uh, resurrect my it's an e46 yeah he e doesn't like have the supercharger like yours, yours. yeah is an e46. but it's the same we have the same color car don't we yeah it's like carbon it's like dark blue it's called dark carbon blue. black carbon or something black, yeah. but it's dark blue yeah. all right yeah. so 
thank you so much, Tanner, for bringing yeah, uh, your absolutely. 996 out. TannerFaust.com is where we go. Find out all the information. Yep. He's course. on Facebook. He's on Twitter. Gear, They're all linked from Tanner Faust. Channel. Channel. Yep. And uh, until next time, it's Adam Carolla for Matt, DeAndrea, Tanner Faust saying, keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. <laughs>